So you've got £30,000 to spend on a GT car. What are you going to be looking for in that car? Well, I would say it needs a very, very smart front end, a bonnet longer than a London bus, a great big thumping V8 hauling it along the road, along with lovely comfortable leather seats to sink into, and no legroom sounds about right too in the back, along with a white set of rear hips, and enough exhaust pipes to remind everyone behind you that you're better than them. Everybody, welcome to the Jaguar XKR. So you join us on the outskirts of Regent's Park in central London in the Jag. And <laughs> what a car. At a time like this when we're just cruising about, it is so quiet, it is so comfortable, it is so refined. Um, it just makes you forget where you are really and that is purposefully what a GT car should be doing. I've got seats that adjust in about a billion different ways. They've got lovely heated and cool functions. I've got a beautiful bows and walk-in sound system that sounds fantastic. I'd say it's very much on par with um, modern Harman Kardon and BMWs. You've got a nice, chunky, heated steering wheel as well. And sort of all the other creature comforts you expect from a Jag. You've got a sat-nav, but the fact it's from 1945, I guess it does the job. You've got a miniature digital driver's display that can show you navigation, it can show other interesting bits and bobs that you expect from any car. You've got this beautiful leather interior with this red stitching and as you can see while I'm driving along the lovely little embossed R logo there um, on the seat just to remind you that you're not in any Jag, you're in a XKR from their racing division. Uh, you've got a 6 ED changer and just to even remind you that you're driving a Jag you can set the screen saver to the British flag to remind you of your queen and country as you drive along through London representing Great Britain and their engineering and just sort of driving through this traffic in London you know I've got a nice lazy throttle the steering's really nice and light the car is supremely comfortable if I haven't already mentioned that about 50 times over you've also got that beautiful ZF six-speed gearbox. You're, you're completely unaware of changing gear. And in a situation like this, this gearbox makes absolute sense. Obviously, I know you can get more and more modern cars now. And I know the F-Type comes with the ZF8 and that is better in every way. But you know, for what it is, this gearbox is, it, I think is fantastic. You've even got other creature comforts such as keyless entry and exit. So the one I'm driving today is very, very, late iteration of it being a 2013 plate so it does come with some suspension modifications etc so in the older jags the 4.2s you had the older cat system which was jaguar's computer controlled suspension technology system in this car though we've got proper bilstein adaptive dampers which do the job beautifully um, but you can definitely tell it's been tuned for comfort so i've driven an f-type and that was a much, much firmer ride. So you can tell that this car was conceived at a time Jaguar obviously had both being sold at the same time. And that does show because the F-Type is a harsher riding, more sharper sports car. And this is just a more comfortable, more sublime GT car. And one of the biggest benefits of this car by far has got to be its looks. It looks absolutely exquisite. It just, oozes class and luxury and style and there's something sort of demeaning about its character at the same time there's you've got those supercharged vents in the bonnet it's like this car in particular has got the speed pack and the black pack so it looks particularly menacing as you drive around london and wherever else you may be and to be honest i think everything's really well put together i think jags get a lot of stick for um not being well made JLR products in general. So when I the only thing that irritates me at a time like this, comfortably cruising through London, is the fact that um, the infotainment system it is slow, it is laggy, it is horrible, and it lets down the entire interior of this car. It is so irritating. My 2006 BMW M6 with its old CCCI drive was a leaps and bounds above what this car was offering, I guess, in 2006. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous that Jaguar didn't update the infotainment system for a 2013 car. To be having graphics like this is ridiculous. And to think this car went on until 2015 in forms such as the XKRS and the XKRS GT. 
it's just appalling. And there's all the times like this, an engine like this makes sense and a supercharger makes sense. Just driving around town and not a single Uber driver in the world is gonna upset you just because you're going to overtake all of them immediately. Like whatever they do, whatever direction they decide to go, when they put their right indicator on, when they're gonna go left, all you see is just touch the throttle and that 460 pound foot of torque will just send you in the way you need to go very efficiently and very quickly. So we're now on the lovely A3 and again this car's quiet, comfortable, refined, it's made for covering long distances, especially motorway miles and just making them so nice and easy. You know, the, the suspension is tuned to perfection for roads and driving such as this. It just feels so good, so lovely on the road. You can feel that sort of compliance and suspension where it's just going over bumps and nooks and crannies and we've now come off the A3 onto some back roads which involves putting the car into dynamic mode. All very cool sounding stuff. Um, this opens up the valves and the exhaust. It <laughs> sharpens up the suspension and the steering and it makes the car sound like that. <laughs> and then the supercharged 5 litre V8 starts coming to life all 503 brake horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. <laughs> now that, that's a proper engine. That isn't any turbocharged bollocks. That is a pure muscle, fire-breathing V8 with some serious folk and you've got to think this car is completely stocked from the factory just relentless it's amazing power like it's just immense it's just immense like you just put your foot down you drop down again <laughs> it's very c63 remnants i think very mercedes amg 6.2 litre noise but smaller capacity better fuel economy supercharged so you've got bigger tuner capabilities with it. Jaguar had their XF with a few mods, stock gearbox, and it topped out up the Soul Flats in America at 225 miles an hour. 225 miles an hour in a Jaguar XFR. Imagine what the XKR could do. Unfortunately though, it's times like this when the gearbox does feel a bit slushy. It's times like this when you're going for those overtakes, going for those bits and bobs and you feel like you could just do it with a bit better gearbox and it's just not there. It, it's so smooth around town, you can almost forgive it for being sort of slow in it on the limit. But you know, the second it's in sport gearbox, you know, it, it's not a bad... I mean, you can hear it as it changes gears, so that sort of noise as it launches itself into the next gear. So the Jag is by no means a sports car, but an absolutely phenomenal mile munching weapon of the GT Tourer. Leave a like, subscribe and let us know what you think of the XKR. Would you buy one or would you look to the Germans instead?